Hey everyone, Forrest here, and today I'm gonna to show you how to back up your Mac computer in under five minutes. Let's dive in. So the only thing we're gonna to need to do this is an external hard drive. And it doesn't matter whether you use a solid state drive or a hard disk drive, just know you'll get a bit more performance out of a solid state drive. I've left a few links in the description to some of my favorite external hard drives. Ideally, we want our external backup drive to have at least twice the capacity of our internal hard drive. So if you're wondering how big your internal hard drive is, head up to your Apple in the upper left, go to About This Mac, then go to more info and lastly scroll down and it'll tell you your storage capacity. It'll say some amount available of some larger amount. So in my case, I have a one terabyte internal hard drive. So for me, I want my backup drive to be two terabytes or larger. The next thing that we're gonna wanna do is plug in our external hard drive and format it. Now do note that formatting erases the drive, but it is an important part to get the drive ready for time machine. Now I have a hard and fast rule that says if I'm ever formatting a drive, I make sure that the only drive connected to the computer is the one I want to format. So for me, I'm gonna eject and unplug all other external hard drives, memory cards, flash drives, whatever, and ensure that the only drive connected to my machine is the one that I'm looking to format or erase. Once that's ready, I'm gonna go up to the search window on my Mac and I'm gonna type in disk utility. And we wanna launch the disk utility application. This is also in your applications folder if you'd rather find it that way. Now inside a disk utility, we wanna come up to the view menu and go to show all devices. And the way this works is it's gonna show us a list of all the different storage devices, both internal and external connected to our computer. And I can see right here under the external section that I have a SanDisk Extreme Drive connected to my machine. That's the drive I want to format. So you don't wanna click on an individual container here. We actually wanna click at the root level of the drive. Now do remember if you see multiple listings under external, you probably wanna make sure you truly have disconnected all the other drives from your machine. Once I'm clicked on this root level here, I'm gonna go up to erase in the upper right hand corner and I'm gonna give this drive a name. I'm gonna call it computer backup. Now for Time Machine, regardless of whether this is a solid state drive or a hard disk drive, we wanna set the format to APFS and the scheme to the GUID partition map. So just like this, this looks perfect. I'm gonna go ahead and click erase. Again, this is going to delete all the data off of the drive. Now that the drive is ready, it's time to get Time Machine configured. So to get to it, we're gonna go up to the Apple in the upper left-hand corner. We're gonna to go to System Settings, and then we're gonna select General, and in the General section, we're gonna scroll down to Time Machine. You could also get here just by searching within the System Settings window. Now that we're here, we're gonna go ahead and click on Add Backup Disk. It's gonna ask us which disk we'd like to use. I'm gonna select the Computer Backup Disk and click Setup Disk. Now it's gonna give us a few configuration options. The first is encryption. Encryption is essentially going to password lock this drive. Now the problem is, if you forget your encryption password, you can't use the drive. So pick a password that you can remember, maybe write it down somewhere, put it in a password manager if you use it, but I highly recommend encrypting it. If you are really bad with passwords and you plan on maybe storing this drive in a very secure location like a bank deposit box or something like that, you could definitely turn this off. But do remember that with encryption off, anybody who gets this drive has access to all of your data. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on encryption and I'm gonna choose a good password. One note on the password hint is that it is required. You do have to put something here. So put something there that kind of tells you and gives you an idea of what your password is. Disk usage limit gives us the option to essentially put constraints on how much of the external hard drive Time Machine has access to. This is really helpful if you maybe bought an eight terabyte external hard drive to use for Time Machine, and you really only wanna give Time Machine access to two or three terabytes of that, you can apply that in the disk usage limit. For most folks though, I imagine you're gonna be buying a drive that is around two to three times larger than your internal hard drive, so you can leave this on none. From here, I'm gonna go ahead and click on done, and that's going to configure my backup. So you all, that's all there is to it. You can see mine has already started backing up automatically. It's gonna take another 11, 11 minutes to complete the backup, but that's it, it's that simple. Now do keep watching if you wanna see some more advanced settings and some other customizations that we can apply, but for the most part, just plug in this drive once a month, once every couple weeks, open up your Time Machine preferences. You shouldn't have to do any configuration again, but you will wanna open Time Machine and just be sure that you watch this progress bar make its way across the screen. 
For those of you who want to look a little bit deeper, there are some more advanced options. Namely, under options dot dot dot, we have a couple choices here. First off is backup frequency. This is really useful for those of you who maybe have an iMac or a Mac mini, and you're gonna leave a backup drive connected to that machine all the time. You can choose at which frequency the computer backs up to the external. For most folks, I think a once a day backup is good. But again, if you don't have a desktop that's always on or always having drives connected to it, Time Machine's just gonna back up whenever you plug in the hard drive. So this really doesn't matter for most laptop users. Additionally, we have the option to back up on battery power and I always leave that on. However, it will negatively impact the amount of battery that you get out of your machine if it's actively backing up. Finally, you can exclude certain files. So if there are internal hard drive files that you don't want backed up, I can't really think of a good example, you can exclude them from the backup. You'll notice that by default, it excludes itself. So it's not backing up itself to itself, which is a really good thing. I'm gonna click on done and then go to this search bar inside of system settings and type time machine. There's one more preference in control center. It says show time machine status in the menu bar. And I like to turn this on. So I'm gonna to go to show time machine status in the menu bar. And then right here, I'm gonna make sure that time machine is set to show in menu bar. All this does is if I close system settings, now in the upper right hand corner, I have a little clock icon, that's the time machine icon. And I can click on that and it will give me a status of my time machine backup. So kind of moving forward, I don't like to have to go into system settings and then general and then time machine. Instead, everything can be managed right from here. We can click on that, it'll give us a status as far as how much is backed up, tell us how much data has been copied. We could skip the backup, we can browse old backups if you wanna see how recently you've backed up or maybe go restore or pull a file off of an, a previous backup. And then additionally, you can open the same settings this way. So I like that, I find that to be a really easy way to find my time machine status, be able to quickly get to what I'm looking for. All right, that sums up this video. I wanna say, please take this seriously. I've heard from two students in the past two weeks who've lost files on their computer because of a computer crash or other computer issues. So take this seriously. Remember to back up that drive. Don't just watch this video and get it configured and then leave it in your drawer for the next three years. It won't do anything for you. Lastly, hit the like button down there. Hit subscribe to stay up to date with future videos and I will see you in the next one.